Guys, after three years of having braces in my mouth, this is the end result. Well, not the end end result, but close to the end result. Hello! Uh, I got my braces off. Feels so wonderful and free. Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy, AB. This is gonna be my first movie review I have done in a while. I, I think my last movie review I did was honestly on the Exorcist Believer. And if you know my movie reviews, they're typically a hit or miss when it comes to the view and engagement counts. I'm gonna be doing a movie review on Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, AKA Beetlejuice 2. But before we get into it, of course I have to do this just to see if it will work. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. God damn it. I should make you guys aware that I am a huge fan of the original Beetlejuice. I have so much nostalgia for that movie. I remember watching it a lot as a kid. It was one of the greatest Tim Burton movies I have ever seen as a kid. And it, it's one of those movies that has like a huge cult following to it. And yes, it's great. But is Beetlejuice too great? Listen to my hot take on it. My world famous spoiler alert is now in effect. Beetlejuice 2 follows the three generations of the Dietz family following a tragedy of Charles Dietz's death. Now we have Delia Dietz, the stepmom from the original, played by Katherine O'Hara, who is a uh, Tim Burton regular. Then we got Winona Ryder reprising her role as Lydia. And now we got Jenna Ortega as her daughter, Astrid. Lydia is now traumatized by the events of the first Beetlejuice. She is completely scared of Beetlejuice and she is seeing him everywhere. And she has to take pills to kind of subside the hallucinations, or I'm sorry, as I should say, the hallucinations. Because we do find out later in the film that Beetlejuice has been making Lydia see him. And yeah, I get it, the whole concept of this Beetlejuice sequel being a legacy sequel and all that sounds good on paper, right? And I was really excited for this movie. In fact, I walked into the theater today, today as I'm filming this video, with my date. This is a girl I've been talking to for a couple uh, weeks. Uh, this is our first date. We go uh, have lunch, then we go to see Beetlejuice at the AMC. And we are both thinking it's gonna be really good, but geez, we were so disappointed. And yeah, I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this because I know, Everybody on the internet apparently is raving about how great Beetlejuice 2 is, but it's not. Sorry to burst your bubble, everybody. Beetlejuice 2, it's terrible, in my opinion at least, so don't go shitting on me in the comment section just for having an opinion. Because we all know our world is completely collapsed in society. We all know this for a fact. We can't have opinions anymore, even about movies. Like, no joke, my Toy Story 5 video I did, I got a handful of hate comments on there just because I didn't like the idea of the plot for Toy Story 5. So yeah, I know there is a good chance I'm gonna get some hate comments here for not liking Beetlejuice 2. And I really hate to say that about Beetlejuice 2 because I was really looking forward to the movie. I am a huge Tim Burton fan, like one of the biggest Tim Burton fans of all time. Like, I love all those movies. One of my favorites happens to be uh, the Sweeney Todd musical he did. It was great, in my opinion. But really, Beetlejuice 2 was just overhyped by its promotional crap, including the Fanta drink that came out, which tastes like sh and a little bit of candle wax. Now, then again, that's probably something Beetlejuice would actually drink, and I'll give him props for that, but still, that was a warning sign from God himself, I believe, that Beetlejuice 2 was gonna suck, and guess what? I actually ignored it. And this movie kind of goes borderline censoring Michael Keaton's Beetlejuice character, because we had him in the first movie drop a complete uncensored F-bomb. Nice fucking model! Which was one of my favorite parts of the movie, but when it came to his little F-bomb he had in this movie? What the f***? They censored it, and yes, it was in the trailer when they censored it, and I thought, okay, maybe that's just for the trailer, because, you know, you can't really bring that out on a trailer, so we're, we're just gonna surprise everybody by him actually saying, in the movie, uncensored, but no. And when it happened, it just sounded very, very, very shitty, especially with the whole editing and style of Beetlejuice. It just, for me, it didn't fit. But yeah, that's a tiny complaint. I'm getting into the 
way bigger complaints I got. And the other part of him partially being censored that I have a problem with is that the parts where he wasn't censored whatsoever were really gross out moments. Like uh, he was in the therapy session with uh, Justin Therowitz's character and uh, Lydia. He said, let's bring the inner child out of you. And he made Lydia look pregnant at one point. It was very weird, very weird. Then popped out a Beetlejuice baby and it was just disgusting. A lot of crap in that scene, like spilling your guts. Disgusting. DISGUSTING! Then again, that's pretty Beetlejuice-esque, but I feel like they overdid it with that. Now, even though I do have mostly complaints about Beetlejuice 2, I actually have to give Tim Burton props for one thing. I will say that I love how he stick to mostly practical effects for most of the stuff in there, even with the gross out moments, even though I'm kind of questioning whether that's a CGI or a mix of practical and CGI, I don't know, but I liked a bunch of the practical effects he had in this movie. It feels like it stayed true to the original one in that sense. And it, you know, because if you like added in extra CGI and crap, like too much, it would just make the whole movie feel completely disconnected from the first one. But it was connected to the first one in that sense. My other issue, which is probably one of my biggest issues I'm actually really mad about, I actually walked into this movie wanting to know how they were gonna write off Adam and Barbara, Maitland, you know, the original characters played by Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin in the original. And obviously we can't really have them because they're, they're pretty old looking now and you know, ghosts aren't really supposed to age, I don't think. But the way they wrote them off was just completely crappy, lazy, and just disrespectful. Lydia literally just said, oh, they found a loophole and they moved on. The f Are you kidding me? That is, oh my God. That is literally the laziest piece of writing Tim Burton's ever given to us. Like what the sh Now I do understand that they had to write off Charles Dietz's character because the actor Jeffrey Jones is pretty problematic. In fact, extremely problematic considering he's done some really unholy things that I can't even mention on this video because I may get in trouble just for mentioning them. And I understand that. So I'm not going to really complain about that, but still didn't feel the same, but I understood why they had to do it. And yeah, Winona Ryder was even terrible in this. Not her fault. All the acting issues were, were due to the writing and the director Tim Burton, I blame him for that, and I really hate to say that, but Winona Ryder didn't feel like the same Lydia we got from the first Beetlejuice, and neither with Beetlejuice. Like, Michael Keaton, he's usually great and amazing in everything he's in, but it didn't feel the same even with him in it. And don't even get me started on Jenna Ortega. Just because of this movie, I am no joke getting tired of seeing her have to be cast in every freaking movie. And believe it or not, I actually think Katherine O'Hara was pretty spot on as Delia. She seemed the same, to me at least. In fact, I actually kind of liked her even more in this movie, but hey, that's just me. I have really unpopular opinion here that I'm gonna get shit on for it. Ring it on, internet! And mainly my issue is that a bunch of the plot points were just terrible and they fell completely flat and they didn't build up and develop into anything else. And I feel like they were copying a lot of aspects from the original Beetlejuice movie. Like, we had that one character, I think his name was Ozzy, I think? I'll, I'll double fact check real quick. No, it's not Ozzy. His name is Otho. My point was I feel like they were copying a lot of aspects from the original movie just to try to recapture the feel. Like, uh, we had that one character in the original movie, Otho who was trying to exploit Lydia's family and their house just because they can make a fortune off the fact that it's haunted and it's the ghost house of Winter River. I think that's the town. I'm, I'm not even gonna bother fact checking it. Just hate on me in the comments for it, I guess. But yeah, in the first movie we had Otho doing that and in this movie we have Justin Theroux's character wanting to marry Lydia just to exploit her because she in this movie is apparently this huge psychic uh, ghost communicator, I guess is what I could call her, because she can talk to ghosts and she makes money off the TV show she does, where she talks about it. And uh, Justin Theroux's character not only wants to marry her, but he's also her manager, so we got him exploiting her for money. We've got to have money. But I will say that there were some more original things they put into this movie. I just didn't really care for them. Like we got Monica Belushi's character playing Beetlejuice's ex-wife. I didn't really care for her. Okay. Yeah. Bring an extra antagonist to kind of keep up with everything. Eh. I mean, my only one compliment I will give her is that she is pretty hot looking. Like 
And then we got Willem Dafoe. I don't really have a huge issue with him, but he's also a detective in the ghost world, but was also a actor pretending to be a detective. So it was kind of weird about that. Is he an actor or is he a detective? Who knows? Because he was trying to stop Beetlejuice and also Dolores, played by Monica Belushi that I mentioned previously. And then we got this weird plot point, which comes with a plot twist that was just super easy to tell. In fact, uh, my date who was with me pointed this out before it even was revealed. So props to her. But yeah, we have this whole plot point where Astrid is crushing on this one guy that lives in R Winter River. And the plot twist is that he is a ghost who murdered his family and then died from trying to run away from the police and falling and breaking his neck. And he is trying to take Astrid's life so he can become human again and I guess kill more people because he's a complete psychopath. And my last complaint before I end out this entire movie review shitting on Beetlejuice is that the ending of Beetlejuice 2 is basically almost identical or just too identical to the ending of Beetle the first Beetlejuice. It has Lydia being forced to marry Beetlejuice again and she's in her same little red wedding dress while he's in the same little burgundy tuxedo. I think it's burgundy. What's different is that they kind of like do a recreation of the dinner scene where they're like lip syncing a song being forced to do it by the ghost. Then again, that's not original. And then a bunch of other stuff starts happening, including uh, Dolores coming in to try to get Beetlejuice. Then Willem Dafoe's character comes in, tries to stop everyone, but Beetlejuice makes him freeze. And then we find out that just because Beetlejuice broke a rule from the other side, his contract with Lydia to marry her is null and void, so she no longer has to do it. Super original. Then we have this whole trippy, trippy real ending where, where Lydia decides to quit her TV show so she can spend more time with her daughter. Astrid. And Astrid meets this vampire guy, gets married, and has a baby with him. But then, surprise, the baby is the Beetlejuice baby! Yippee! Oh, okay. But then, it's a dream where Lydia wakes up with Beetlejuice next to her saying, I had the weirdest dream. But guess what? That was a dream too. In conclusion, I give Beetlejuice 2 1 out of 10 stars for being an overly hyped, overly promoted pile of ectoplasm. So yeah, I know I'm gonna be getting a lot of hate comments for shitting on this overly hyped masterpiece. So you know what? I don't give a flying f anymore. Give me all the shitty little hate comments your tiny hearts desire. But if you agree with me, we can be friends. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments or hate comments. So yeah, this is the end of my video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment down below, and please subscribe and turn on notification bell so you don't miss a single video. This has been your boy, Avi. out. Peace out, Rainbow Trouts. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you for watching the Beetlejuice 2 movie review video that I'm currently editing as I'm filming this little last segment here for you guys. Uh, today is September 16th, 2024. This is my channel's sixth birthday. Maybe fifth birthday? I don't know. I, it's been a while. Been a while since I've been making videos on this channel. I just want to say thank you guys for uh, tuning in and listening to me, watching my videos. You guys are the best. I love you. And here's to six more years of AV Plays TV.